and Mitch Johnson got me in the hand today. The team is preparing for Friday's quarter-final against Pakistan. Steve Waugh joining the side for advice and inspiration. And four-time champion Roger Federer has beaten Andreas Seppi in straight sets at the Indian Wells Tennis Tournament. Now the 5AA forecast, mostly sunny today, 28, partly cloudy, 23 tomorrow. Saturday, sunny, 27, partly cloudy for Sunday, 30. Then a possible shower Monday, 25. More news as it happens on 5AA. 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. This is Peter Godfrey. Good morning, 8 past 5. Uh, would you believe it's 27 degrees at the moment? <laughs> It's, we're going to ask Jane about this a bit later, I think. It's uh, been one of those nights we've actually been increasing in temperature. The, uh, the brewer says our low was 21 degrees at 10 o'clock last night. Now we're up to 27. So uh, we'll have to find out why that's the case. Let's head to New Zealand, though, to find out what's happening over that side of the ditch. Selwyn Manning, editor of the uh, eveningreport.nz, independent news. Uh, I haven't got all your whole title right, Selwyn. I've got to... <laughs> Sorry, I messed that up. <laughs> it's brand new. That's why, Peter, it'll That's, etch into your DNA soon. It, it yeah. will. It's still got that new car smell about it. Editor yeah. of uh, EveningReport.nz, uh, independent right. interactive debate in what New Zealand. Saying? Yeah, nice. Actually, I was having a bit of a look around there last night. You got, like, uh, uh, feeds from, um, like, Al Jazeera and uh, was it BBC4 and a couple of others on there as well? Yeah, there's, there, that's in the channel area. So, yeah. you know, um, instead of people having to go to Sky TV and, you know, pay their memberships, if, yeah. uh, if they so wish to, they can kick into that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and it. see it, It's you know, like Al Jazeera is going streaming um, live. Mm, mm. Um, there's also On Demand and, uh, yeah, quite a few of them. Um, RT TV, you know, that's um, from Russia but uh, with a global kind of position. Yeah, yeah. Um, and has people like Larry King, that's really good actually right. on the air. And, yeah. you know, it's obviously tailored for for, new, um, for the you know, English speaking audience. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, quite a few. So I'm quite, I quite like that kind of thing. You know, yeah, good to get a different, different perspective on a whole lot of things happening around the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at uh, well uh, something that's I guess of global significance, but uh, the uh, the sort of the New Zealand angle on it. Um, so there's been a global poll uh, on uh, views about um, uh, spying, basically, and uh, Kiwis, like most of others in the world, really don't like it. Yeah, that's right. Now this poll, it's um, it was commissioned by Amnesty International. What I've found, Peter, in the specific areas um, related to New Zealand and those surveyed was over two-thirds of New Zealanders are opposed to the New Zealand government's signals intelligence base, the GCSB, taking part in the US-led Five Eyes global surveillance. So that's what we've been talking about in recent weeks. Mm. There's been revelations coming into New Zealand, um, Nikki Hager's investigations um, being put to the public, um, David Fisher at the Herald, many people contributing to getting... Uh, the official documentation that they've acquired out to the public. So the public is up to speed with this whole debate. Now, the in Amnesty International uh, report, it noted, this is the global element of it, that the United States shares, and I'm quoting from the report here, um, the United States shares the fruits of its mass surveillance program with Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom under the Five Eyes Alliance. But even in those countries, more than three times as many people oppose the surveillance at seventy percent, is then supported at seventeen percent, and the New Zealand poll results, as I um, alluded to in the intro, the Peter, um, it, it says that the, and quote again, the poll revealed that of the one thousand and eight New Zealanders polled, nearly three times more people would oppose New Zealand government surveillance of the internet and the phone use of New Zealand citizens than those that approve it. Um, so that was 63% opposing to 22%. So New Zealand is a little bit softer than some of those countries overseas, but basically showing that there is huge um, opposition to this from the sample that was given, and statistically the Amnesty is saying that it's accurate. Hmm. In, uh, you've, you've sort of gone into it in a whole lot of detail on, on your, your website there too and sort of looking at some of the figures from, from other countries as well. Uh, but one point that Amnesty made about it is uh, that the, the US should see uh, or take it as a warning, This the, the, the poll that surveillance is damaging its credibility. Now, I guess some might say, well, is the US ever really worried about its credibility in, in things like that? Is that type of a statement likely to be heeded anyway? Well, it's hard to say. It, mm. it seems that the sensitivities are coming from the population. Yeah. Um, if you were going to assess all of this, it would be that the 
Five Eyes Alliance, if you like, is working without um, the degree of governance that would curb its use. Yes. And that's certainly, I'm speaking from the point of view of um, the New Zealand government, it, that there is a big question here that is remaining unanswered, Peter, and that is what does the New Zealand government, the elected officials, meaning the Prime Minister and others, know uh, about these operations? Are they aware of what the GCSB, the New Zealand base, is doing in our name? It would appear from the denials, and really, you know, politically, the Prime Minister has dug himself into a ditch on this, Peter, was saying that there's no truth to it, that the documentation that uh, the investigative journalists are referring to is out of touch and, and it's old, um, so it's not relevant. Um, so the investigative journalists started to actually produce, you know, documents, official documents that show, you know, only 18 months old, um, things like that. That done, They are very, very recent operations. One where, for example, New Zealand GCSB targeted, for example, the, the officials um, in the ASEAN nations, and, and, and the, the documents named the individuals concerned. Um, so it's, it's very specific um, in, in that area. Mm. The population that does seem, Peter, is, 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 is getting the message that, OK, well, if the New Zealand government is not steering the ship, the surveillance ship, then who is? And the suspect is basically that it's US-led. Yeah. Um, and in that case, you know, it kicks into that, age-old culture of New Zealand is where we think, uh, OK, well, we don't like being sold down the river by a superpower, and that seems to be coming through. But it's interesting to see that even in other Five Eyes countries, Australia, Canada and, and Britain, that the actual results are even firmer against this kind of thing. Yeah. Interesting, though, the other the other side of it, uh, almost an, an anomaly in this, I guess, in a way, um, the, uh, the views of those polled... Um, were a little bit different. Forty-three percent of people said the New Zealand government should monitor uh, internet and phone use of foreigners, with forty yeah. percent saying they should not. So that's that's a little bit closer. So yes. monitoring of foreigners is fine, but not of themselves. Yes. So there's an interesting thing there. It yeah. does seem an amnesty assesses that part and speaks to that point, and it, it believes that what that is is due to um, like what like watching what unfolded in December in Sydney. Yeah, um, with the okay, hostage yeah. situation, mm. um, New so Zealand. The is, that. Yeah, the Prime Minister here in New Zealand has very much been ratcheting up um, an awareness of of the dangers of terrorism and really labelling those in, in more broader terms. Um, that makes New Zealanders start to look at our Southeast Asian um, neighbours with a certain degree of suspicion. Mm. And so, for those communities that are living here, you, you're absolutely right. The the poll results showed. Uh, that New Zealanders, you know, in, 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 in sizable numbers, believe that those those communities should be surveilled and thoroughly, and even take all dragnet type operations put against them. Um, the, the 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 resistance is coming from um, uh, a, a desire that the government does not surveil New Zealand citizens and and um, permanent residents. But then it starts to get cloudy. Um, do the people really mean that? How, I mean, to put it this way, how are they going to differentiate between New Zealand citizens and permanent residents of a different ethnicity? Mm. And so you start mm. to get into dangerous ethical and, and moral grounds yeah. here too. So yeah. I yeah. guess, you know, it gets back to that premise of that question that you put before, doesn't it? You know, that the, the United States, um, its brand has been damaged, its reputation has been damaged, but it gets back to that balancing act. Well, it, it obviously believes it's worth risking all of that to try and get the communications of everybody so that its analytical grunt machine back in the United States can sift the wheat from the chaff and identify. So I think those big civil libertarian um, civil libertarian arguments are global, obviously they're global, and mm. they're certainly happening here. Actually, you know, without trying to do a plug on an evening report last night, there was a, a very significant article by Dr Paul Buchanan, who's a, a security analyst, and he, he, he wrote specifically on this, that the mass collection... Um, label or definition is different to the mass surveillance and when our Prime Minister for example here John Key last year in the election campaign said he would resign as Prime Minister if it was found New Zealand did mass surveillance 
um, that our agencies did mass surveillance. And of course, it's been found out that it does mass collection. So he's saying, well, uh, I'm not going to resign over that. You know, <laughs> so, you know it's, a, it's a classic politician's kind of thing. But Paul Buchanan is actually going into the civil liberties area of that and also the legalities from a global point of view. OK. All right, so we're just going to have a quick break and then uh, we'll come back and uh, hear how you fared with uh, uh, d- Tropical Cyclone Pam that uh, headed your yeah. way since we last spoke. Be right back with you in a moment, so. Uh, Selwyn Manning's with us, editor of EveningReport.nz. 5AA Breakfast. Dr Patricia Montanaro, the AMA State <laughs> President. Yesterday's changes have done nothing to reassure the AMA that this is a good plan, have they? Because this plan has no detail, it's still bad. This is a real estate deal around closing off the repat, closing off Hampstead Hospital. A real estate deal disguised as a health blueprint. David Penberthy, Mark Aston, and Jane Riley for breakfast. Breakfast. Weekday mornings from 6 on 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. At the Hilton Hotels Gaming Room, you're on a winner even before you play because it's one of those gaming rooms that just feels good. There are plenty of industry-leading machines, monthly promotions, loads of parking, smiling staff. Oh, and speaking of happy, the 4 till 6 p.m. happy hours have pints at schooner prices and wines by the glass from 5.50 seven days. So, can I save you a seat? The Hilton Hotel. It's a jackpot venue. Open 9am to 3am, Sir Donald Bradman Drive. Gamble responsibly. Have you heard what's happening at Great Southern RV? They're launching the new 2015 Luxury Caravan range. Little caravans with full ensuite, up to the big 24-foot spaceship slide-outs and the best brands in the business. Billabong Custom Caravans and Universal Luxury Caravans. Let Andrew and the team from Great Southern RV look after you with the service and courtesy you expect from the best. Great Southern RV, 1172 South Road, Clovelly Park. Homestyle Living Outdoors Verandas and Pergolas has built thousands of quality creations using genuine Blue Scope Colourbond steel, from the beach to the Barossa. And now's the perfect time to see them because you'll also get $500 cash back. For over 15 years, Homestyle Living have been changing the homes and improving the lives of their customers with outstanding verandas and pergolas. $500 cash back for limited time. Dreams we're building at Homestyle Living Outdoors. Call 1300 Hi, I'm Andy Edwards from Elders Real Estate. Getting the best result from selling your property isn't about good luck. It's about good planning. So it's imperative that you and your agent discuss the right method of sale for you and your property. Whatever option you choose, whether it's auction, private treaty or even tender, I assure you the team at Elders will communicate over and above to achieve the absolute best sale outcome. To find the right agent for you, visit eldersrealestate.com.au. Peter Godfrey on 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. 21 minutes past five. Uh, talking with Selwyn Manning, uh, editor of EveningReport.nz, New Zealand's home of independent interactive debate. Now, uh, Selwyn, cyclone, tropical cyclone Pam uh, devastated Vanuatu. You guys were uh, uh, pretty worried about how it was going to hit you, but you've uh, you've held up okay. It eased up before it got to your shores. Yeah, pretty much, Peter. Um, certainly, uh, those on the North Island East Coast have had it pretty hard. Um, mm. The swells have been huge. Um, they've spent the rest of the week cleaning up and things. Um, but you, you're right, you know, you know, looking back um, from Friday right through to Monday, really, the Kiwis, we were all, well, on tender hooks, mm. fearing that the, the worst could happen, this huge weather bomb out there hitting our way. Uh, looked like it was tracking down the east coast side of the you know, country out into the Pacific slightly, about 300 kilometres offshore. Um, but the c- concerns were on Sunday that it looked like it was, well, it looked like it was starting to actually think like, shall we, shall we move over towards New Zealand a bit closer? And it looked like it could actually really, really come in strong um, around the Coromandel area, which is not too far from Auckland. But luckily, it, it remained on its course after a little bit of a teeter there. And uh, really, what happened, Peter, was um, the, the uh, Great Barrier Islands, about 70 kilometres off uh, from the heart of Auckland City, um, it's sitting just in the Pacific Coast there. It was whacked by the thing pretty strongly, but they're resilient people out there. I've got to tell you, those Great Barrier Island people are you know, really tough people. But the, the winds coming through there were uh, gusting around 140 to 160 kilometres an hour. 
um, the, the, the seas were just huge, mountainous, and that was what happened to the rest as, as Pam moved down. Um, the the east, uh, Bay of Plenty was feared that it would get whacked pretty hard, mm. but um, it, it was spared much of it um, due to the nature of the, the cyclone and the winds and the directions where they're coming from. But the East Cape were, was roofs pulled off houses. People were evacuated from their houses. Um, it, it's a small but significant community in East Cape. It's very remote. Um, there were trees pulled out, you know, big trees ripped out of their roots. It was a formidable storm, even though it, it, the heart of Cyclone Pam had cooled by the time it got here, Peter. Um, but also, also down in um, the, the seas, uh, six metre, five metre seas, apparently. Gee. Locals had said that they'd never seen anything like this that they could remember, at least in the last 30 years. So mm. it was a big weather storm, this thing. And um, we're just very lucky in New Zealand that we escaped the, the, you know, the worst of it. But like we know, you know, like your your audience knows Peter Vanuatu. Well, uh, you know, people are saying that, like, you, you would all know anyway what, what's happened. There. Yeah, it's yeah. total devastation. Mm. One of the interesting things that came through last night was from the United Nations Population Fund, and they are saying that there are, in Vanuatu, Peter, thousands of pregnant women require care from the um, from in the wake of the cyclone. That's another element that we really haven't considered yet, mm. is, 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 is that, you know, that wonderful time in all of our families' lives when a new baby is coming, and there, as I say, there are thousands of pregnant women that are, you know, really needing some real specialist care. And if you look at the reports that came through on New Zealand TV last night, Campbell Live, John Campbell himself over in Vanuatu, and they were doing some fantastic work there, and they were showing how in Port Vila, which is, you know, it's 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 the one that's looked after them, the area that's looked after the most. Just total devastation. The de- degree of difficulty to get potable water, drinkable water, mm, mm. Um, clean food and clean clothes is the biggest challenge that they've got. It's significant. There's also criticisms that some of the aid is taking it too long to get get through in those outer islands, like your news bulletin. Yeah. Um, it was it was pitching, wasn't it, Peter, mm. before we came on air. Communications to the outer islands is still down for much of them. Yeah. Any, any Kiwis uh, unaccounted for in, in Vanuatu? No, all accounted for, um, okay. and uh, that, that, that's obviously a huge positive. Um, yeah, our, yeah. Our, I mentioned on your Brecky program um, early this week, Monday I think it was, um, that one of our foreign affairs um, people over in Port Vila had messaged, and uh, she had said that when the cyclone came through, it was absolutely terrifying, and, and I know that's stating the obvious, but this woman's pretty tough. She's really, you know, she's been in some terrifying situations around the world with her work when she was a journalist and certainly with foreign affairs. And for her to say it was terrifying, it must have been just, you know, you, 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 you're wondering if you're going to make more. Mm, mm. But isn't it marvellous, Peter, sorry to jump in there, isn't it marvellous that the Vanuatu people largely have got through this without losing huge thousands of numbers of lives. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, the numbers were downgraded from what they yeah. feared, wasn't it? So, yeah. you know, I guess in any situation like that, you've got to look for the positives, don't you? you know, the positives yeah. that you guys that uh, weren't as badly as affected as what you were, the, yeah. the positives there out of Vanuatu, that, yeah, the, the deaths weren't there, so... Yeah, it's good to be able to actually say a message of, of mm. how we, in New Zealand, for example, was lucky that mm. we were spared the worst of it mm. because it... Oh, Peter, it was close. Yeah, and yeah. Um, as Weather Watch New Zealand said, it was like a freight train coming down the coast. And it said that it was like New Zealand was um, spectators standing too close to the tracks. Um, and the East Cape of New Zealand was like one of those spectators' elbow being whacked by the freight train as it went through. And that's, that's the weather guys, the science guys, actually um, speaking in such that terms. Paints a, paints a, a picture, of, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Gee. There's a lot, a, lot, a lot of fear that it was going to... Um, cause perhaps the biggest disaster that we've had. Mm. So, everyone, have a great week. Thank you for joining us on the program this morning. Uh, again, we'll catch you on breakfast tomorrow morning just after 6.30 with uh, David, Jane and Mark. Have a great week and uh, we will catch you this time next week. Okay, Peter. Take care. Thanks, everyone. So, we're Manning, editor of EveningReport.nz, uh, New Zealand's independent interactive debate. Check it out. Plenty of things happening on there. 27 minutes past five now and staying up next with all our new sport and weather. Oh, the post is broken, Matthew. Wednesday afternoons on the 5AA Sports Show. <laughs>
Well, talk about a he-man. Rowie and Biggs talk to Lee Matthews. The power. How exciting have they been the last couple of years? Lee Matthews, exclusive to the 5AA Sports Show. And the Crows, a lot in transition, going to have a new coach. I'm sure they'll bounce back. Thanks to Jeep. When it comes to superior performance, luxury and attention to detail, the Jeep Grand Cherokee has it all. On 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. The step-by-step -step guide to South Australia's ultimate firefighters. Step one, tune. Step two, listen. Listen. 